So back in November 2023, OCBC released the Financial Wellness Index 2023 in order to try and better understand the financial well-being of Singaporeans. And the result, the index has continued to fall further and is now at the lowest score since the index started in 2019. Oh, oh. In this video, we will be going through the reports to see why things are becoming worse now. And I will also offer some suggestions as to how you can improve your financial health. But before I start, do join my 7000 members telegram chat group to discuss or ask any questions that you may have. Alright, let's jump right in. First up, the not so good news is that the percentage of Singaporeans who save at least 10% of their salary have dropped from 91% in 2022 down to 84% in 2023. Interestingly, this also coincides with the data from the Department of Statistics, where they also found that the personal savings rate of Singaporeans have gone down overall. Besides that, OCBC also found that Singaporeans are now only saving 25% of their money income on average, which is a 5% drop from 2022. This could be due to the rise in inflation rates as well as the increased cost of living in recent times. In 2022, we saw consumer prices shot up by 6.1%, the fastest rate of increase since 2008, while the inflation rate has come back down to 3.7% at the end of 2023, expenses have still remained elevated. At the same time, incomes are struggling to keep up with inflationary pressures, and all this has led to a drop in the average savings rate. The next part is also quite worrying. More than half of Singaporeans are not financially prepared to overcome a crisis, as they have not saved up at least 6 months of their salary. In fact, the number is even worse as compared to last year, as the number of Singaporeans who have enough savings have actually dropped. Breaking it down further, about 24% or 1 in 4 of the people are having trouble accumulating their emergency funds. I know you have probably heard it many times, but I will just say it again. It is important to always build up your emergency funds because if you don't have enough savings and if you suddenly fall sick or lose your job, touch wood, you won't have many options and may be forced to either sell your investments at a loss or have to borrow money in order to make payments, which is super bad, yeah? So start saving up for your emergency funds as soon as possible. One tip is to start small because even saving $50 or $100 a month is better than nothing, yeah? Then slowly build it up over time. Also, make sure to pile your emergency funds in a high yield savings account, such as UOB1, where you can get a minimum of 3.85% interest when you fulfill the criteria, or money market funds, which don't require you to fulfill any criteria. For more info, check out this video, yeah? Moving on, 40% of Singaporeans are able to comfortably spend beyond the basic expenses this year. This was a whopping 8% drop as compared to last year. The reason for this is because there's a shift in priorities, as Singaporeans are placing more importance on debt repayments as interest rates have been going up. Here, you can see that there's an increase of Singaporeans paying their monthly housing loan installments on time. There are also lesser Singaporeans with unsecured debts, such as credit card and education loans. In terms of investing, the percentage of Singaporeans who have investments have dropped from 85% in 2022 down to 79% in 2023. Meanwhile, there's a shift to lower risk holdings, such as fixed deposits and bonds. Okay, here's what I feel. With high yield savings accounts and fixed income bonds giving some attractive yields now, it may seem like a good idea to put your money into them and avoid investing into the scary stock market. But the thing you have to remember is that while fixed incomes may seem safer than the stock market, if you factor in inflation, you will still lose money. However, if you were to invest that money into good, safe investments, such as an all-world index fund, your money would grow a lot faster than the inflation. Oddly enough, the report showed that 35% of the investors have suffered losses on their overall portfolio this year. This is despite the US market giving some fantastic returns over the past one year. Now, see, investing in the stock market can lose money one. Okay, in investing, you can't just look at the short term, yeah? Because the market fluctuations are high when the time horizon is short. But if you take a longer term view, you will see that the market tends to go up over time. But of course, don't just go and invest all your money lah. You still need to keep some money around for your short to mid term goals, such as saving up for a wedding or a new house purchase one to two years later. Also, if you are already in your 60s to 70s where you don't have a long time horizon to recover from a market crash, safer investments such as fixed incomes and even CBF top ups may be a more suitable choice. But otherwise, if you are young and you don't need that money for now, 
Just invest that money over the long term to get a higher return. Quick pause, did you know that Weibo has one of the most competitive pricing on the market? For the US market, during regular and extended hours, they are only charging a very low fee of 0.025% of the trade amount with a minimum of just 50 cents. And for overnight hours, they are charging 0.03% of total trade amount with a minimum of 89 cents. For the SGX market, they are also charging a low fee of just 0.05% of the trade amount with a minimum of $1.60. Or if you are a new user, you will get to enjoy commission-free trades for SG stock trading for 3 years. For the Hong Kong and China market, they are charging a super low 0.02% to 0.03% with a minimum of $12. Then if you are an US options trader, you'll be glad to know that Weibo is just charging 55 cents per contract with no minimum. Weibo also offers really good conversion rates for whenever you want to convert your currency, of which lets you save more money when trading with Weibo. Right now, Weibo is running a very generous sign up promotion. If you sign up using my link down below, make an initial deposit of 500 US dollars or more into your account, you will first get 5 free shares worth 10 US dollars to 500 US dollars each. Then, if you complete 5 buy trades of US stocks and ETFs with each buy trade worth 100 US dollars or more or options within 30 days of funding your account, you will get 30 trading vouchers worth 450 US dollars in total. Weibo has also upsized their money boot promotion where if you are able to activate and subscribe at least 250,000 US dollars to Weibo, who fill the requirements and maintain the funds for one year, you will get to earn 5,000 US dollars worth of free Nvidia shares. Lastly, there's a new transfer promo from which you could possibly get up to 3,000 US dollars worth of free Nvidia shares by fulfilling the requirements. So if you are interested in trying out Weibo, do sign up to them using my link down below. With that being said, let's get back to the video. Next, a notable trend is that a larger proportion of Singaporeans are still investing into local stocks as compared to international stocks. While there's a 5% increase in investment in local shares and a slight 1% increase in the investment of international stocks, the proportion of Singaporeans opting to invest in local stocks remains slightly higher. This is probably because Singapore stocks seem a lot safer when compared to the roller coaster US stocks. But check this out, from 2008 till now, Singapore stocks basically have been rather flat, while US stocks have been climbing and have hit another all-time high. The key takeaway here is this, if you are still young with time on your side, don't worry about the market fluctuations as the volatility may bring more opportunities to invest. As long as you invest in good companies, none of these fluctuations matter because eventually the stock will always reflect the true value of the company. But then on the other hand, if you are already in your 50s or 60s, and you can't handle the roller coaster, then Singapore stocks are more suitable for you. Besides that, this year's study also highlights another worrying trend, and that is retirement planning has performed poorly this year. There's a whopping 40% of Singaporeans who have not started working on their retirement plans, while at the same time, 65% of Singaporeans are not on track to retiring. Among those who have not started retirement planning, many of them plan to delay the planning until they are older. They'd be like, Aiyah, you only live once, don't worry, be happy. This trend is common across all age groups, especially those in their 20s who want to delay their retirement planning until they turn 42. Though, the older they get, the more likely they will be working on their retirement plans. Okay, here's a tip. If you realize that you are lagging behind in your retirement savings, the first thing you can do is to top up your CPF up to the full retirement sum. That's because according to the Minimum Income Standard 2023 study, a single elderly who has retired would need $1,492 for a basic standard of living. Obviously, the number will continue to rise due to all the inflation that's going on. But if you are 55 now, and if you are able to hit the full retirement sum of $205,800, 10 years later, CPF is going to give you a monthly payout of about $1,670, which means when you retire, your CPF life payout will be able to cover almost the full amount that you need for retirement. However, while CPF life provides a lifelong monthly payout, it's important to note that with the standard plan and basic plan, the payout is fixed and lacks protection against inflation. This means the purchasing power of the payout actually decreases as the cost of living rises over time. And even though the escalating plan payout increases over time, 
the payouts will only be higher than the other two brands at around 77 years old. That's why you will still need to invest your money in order to beat inflation. The report also found that Singaporeans tend to have high expectations for their retirement lifestyle, where they are aiming for a comfortable retirement lifestyle that includes healthy living, travel and leisure activities ranging from $2,665 to $6,020 a month. If you want to achieve this lifestyle, can is can, but just make sure that you have enough savings for this. For example, for a $2,665 retirement lifestyle, using the 4% rule, you can take the $2,665 multiplied by 12 months, then divide by 4%, this works out to be $7,999,500. So as you can see, if you want to have a high quality retirement lifestyle, you will need to start your retirement planning early and let compounding works its magic. Next, about one third of people only pay the minimum sum for their credit card. That's actually quite bad, yeah? Because the average interest on credit card debt is around 27.8%. So once you get into credit card debts, the interest will compound every day and it becomes super hard to get out of it. So if you are unable to handle credit cards responsibly, it's better to just stay away from using credit cards. In that case, one way is to use debit cards instead of credit cards. With debit cards such as Utrip and Trust Card, you get to prevent overspending and accumulating too much debt, as you'll only be able to spend what you have. But at the same time, you still get to enjoy the card's benefits. For example, the Utrip card and Trust Cards lets you earn rewards when you shop at certain merchants, while also giving you competitive exchange rates when you spend overseas. On a positive note, fewer Singaporeans are spending beyond their means to keep up with their peers. This is about 1 in 6% or 16% and is better than the 22% in 2022. While it is nice to see that fewer Singaporeans are overspending to keep up with their peers, the fact is that 16% of Singaporeans are still spending beyond their means, which indicates many of them are struggling to keep up with their finances. Also, it's kind of pointless to overspend to keep up with your peers, as this will lead to unnecessary debt and financial stress. It's better to just focus on living within your means while building a stable and secure financial future for yourself, yeah? Next, more Singaporeans are now able to pay their monthly mortgage installments on time. However, there's still a substantial 36% who are facing difficulty in paying their mortgages. If you find yourself in this situation, here are a few solutions. Don't panic, talk to the bank first. Banks often have programs in place to help homeowners who are struggling to make their mortgage payments. For example, there may be programs such as temporary loan restructuring, extended repayment terms, or interest-only payments. Also, see if you can refinance your loan to a cheaper rate or not. Websites such as Property Guru and Oh My Home lets you find the cheapest loans. Or you could also talk to Credit Counseling Singapore, where they can help you negotiate your loan repayments. Anyway, that was a quick summary of the OCBC Financial Wellness Index 2023. Hopefully, you found it useful. Like, share and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday.